Aloha everyone, and welcome to Serco Lexus's Lux Living Masterclass. My name is Elisa with Serco Lexus, and I'll be your moderator for this evening. You're joining us live from Hokuali B in Kakaako. Mahalo to the Kobayashi Ohana for letting us use this beautiful space. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a couple housekeeping items. Should you have any issues with the Zoom platform, please email lexusperks at serco.com. We will have a Q&A session with Christy towards the end of the class. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, please send it through to our Q&A in the Zoom platform. Now it is my pleasure to introduce you to our Lux Living Masterclass instructor here to help unlock the inner artist in you. Gila born and based accomplished artist, Christy Fujiyama Cosmetics. Hey Lisa. Hi everyone, my name is Christy Fujiyama Cosmetics and I'm an artist from Hila Hawaii. I'm so excited to have you all here today. Um, a little bit about myself, um, I've, I've always done art. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, my dad had a big drafting table in his office and he would have these cool pens and pencils and rulers and supplies and, and he let me play on that table for hours. And I remember um, getting lost in my imagination and just having such a good time. And um, through the years, my mom, she didn't know what to do with me. So she stuck me in art classes throughout the years. And um, I remember in college, I took a couple art classes from an amazing artist in Hila, Linus Chow. And he taught me traditional um, Chinese brush painting. It was from his classes that I was inspired to go to art school. So I went to old, um, Cornish College of the Arts in Seattle, Washington, where I majored in fine arts for two years. And then I thought, well, what am I gonna do with this degree? So I thought I'm gonna maybe learn commercial art. So I went to Otis College of Art and Design in LA where I studied communication, art and illustration. My senior year at Otis, I did my internship at Nickelodeon Studios and it was such a fun and cool experience. It was wild, but I couldn't see myself doing animation for the rest of my life. So I was kind of in a place of uncertainty. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So my parents were like, why don't you come back to Hilo and, and teach art? So I came back to Hilo and I was like selling some small watercolor prints and I was doing different things, but my heart really had a dream to pursue art and do art as, um, for a living. Like I imagined myself doing like big oil paintings. So I decided to move back to LA and um, I found a, a small space in a flower shop and I set up an art studio and I started painting larger scale um, oil paintings and I was selling them for a few hundred dollars and I was excited, but I realized that I'm just not making it. <laughs> I'm not making it. I'm not going to make a living doing this. And I was really disappointed because I felt like this was my shot. This was the chance I was giving myself to, to make it as an artist. So a few months later, I said, I'm going to close up, I'm going to move back to Hilo, and I'm probably going to give up being an artist. And um, I remember that day I was closing on my shop, I was carrying two paintings, one in each hand, and I walked into my um, apartment building into the elevator. And at that moment that I walked into the elevator, a woman walked in, and she said, what is that? And I said, these are my paintings. And she said, come upstairs. So I went upstairs, she goes, I want to see more. So I brought more works. And she, she told her husband, I didn't know, but uh, she, her and her husband owned the building. They had this beautiful penthouse unit. And Farzane told Pasheed, let's introduce Christy to Mariam. So this couple drove me to this um, gallery in West Hollywood, introduced me to this woman, Mariam. And Mariam said, would you like to do a solo show? And I was like, Yes, like that's a dream come true. So I didn't know what I was doing. I created a bunch of paintings. I had a show, it was two weeks. And in that two week period, I sold, I sold works. And I got commissions from clients that had homes in Beverly Hills and West Hollywood. And in my mind, I thought, oh my gosh, I made a lot of money. And I was so excited. And I just felt that I didn't want to give up. Like that experience like changed my life. And um uh, you know, I felt like that moment was like divine intervention. Like there's no other way. I feel like I can explain it. And I, I remember saying, God, if this is what I'm supposed to do, I'll do it for the rest or I'll do it for as long as I'm meant to do it. And, um, you know, it's moments like these, like today, like I'm in a beautiful penthouse at Hokua and with the Servco Lexus team. And they're asking me to teach an art class 
and I'm just, and I'm with all of you and I'm blown away because like, if I gave it up, you know, back in two, early 2000, this experience wouldn't be happening today. So I'm really thankful. So thank you for being here. Um, if you're, this class is really for all levels. If you're new to never, never painted before, you know, this class isn't just about technique. It's about being comfortable and being uninhibited and just enjoying and playing and making art. Your art that you make is really yours. No one should tell you it's not good enough or um, it's not right. It's yours, you know? <laughs> so keep that in mind um, and just have fun today. Uh, we're, abstract is a little different where we're not trying to paint a tree or a, an oceanscape. Abstract is almost anything you want it to be. It's expressing a feeling. It's ex expressing an emotion um, or an experience that doesn't look visually like what you're trying to um, create. So we're going to play today. Uh, we're going to do a few exercises to kind of give you my basic um, process on how I create. And it's something that you can use or, or you can just do your own thing, but we're just going to play today. So I'm going to show you the supplies that we'll be using. Um, if you purchase the paint kit, it came with this Liquitex acrylic paint set that comes with the paints, a medium, a palette knife, brushes, and your canvas board. It also came with your canvas paper, some sketch paper, some uh, construction paper, and your palette paper, which you'll use to um, mix your paint on. If you don't have any supplies and you're just watching, you're welcome to use pencil and paper. You don't need all of these materials. Um, if you have paint, make sure you have a, a bowl to wash your brushes, some paper towel, scissors, and some drawing tools. Okay, thank you. We also have included in this kit a free flow chart, which is a step-by-step -step chart that I kind of made to outline a simple process. We'll go over your concept, items like composition, design elements, abstract strokes, and my favorite, mixing your color palette. Okay. So, yeah, so today I'm gonna play some music that was created by the super talented Hawaii's own Jake Shimabukuro. He created this 40 minute improvisational piece um, based off what he felt would, when you, based off of like, when you create art, what that process would feel like. So it's a very dynamic and interesting piece. And I think it accompanies the class really nicely. Okay, so we're, right now we're gonna talk about concept. Um, just something so that you have something to focus on when you create your piece. When I go into the studio, I love just sitting in front of a blank canvas and being quiet within myself and focusing on just what's going on in my body. You know, sometimes we have so much going on in our heads, like thoughts and, and things. So try to get out of your head and get into your heart and into your body. Feel your feet, your placement in your feet. You know, take the time to stretch your neck, stretch your arms. You know, you don't realize, but even painting a small piece, piece you get very physical. Because what I want you to learn today, if there's one thing, is that when you make art, you're putting your whole being into making your artwork. It's not just like you're like sitting and you're just doing this. You're putting your whole self, your whole feeling into making the piece. So with concept, um, think about an experience, a feeling, an emotion um, that comes to mind. If you have paper and pencil, you can jot down a few things. Um, for me, I think I'm gonna paint in my demonstration later today, about today and how I feel about this experience. Um, are there any colors that come to mind when you're thinking about your concept? And if you don't wanna have a concept, you don't have to have anything, okay? So just take a few minutes and quiet yourself because when you can quiet yourself, you'll allow the inspiration to come to you, okay?
Sometimes when I'm creating a new um, painting or I'm working on a new project, I might take days to come up with a concept. So don't pressure yourself out and, um, you know, just allow yourself to feel what's going on inside of your body. I did a class recently and there was very interesting emotions that were expressed in, in each student's painting, everything from joy to rage. So, you know, it's, it's really just a time to self-reflect and, and be quiet. Okay, so if you have an idea of what you want to create for your for your piece, um, just keep that in mind as we go through these different exercises, because that will be what you focus on. Okay, um, the next exercise that we're going to do is called gestures. When you take like a an art class, a lot of times you learn figurative, you know, drawing, and the first like steps of figurative drawing, you learn this thing called gesture drawing, which is trying to capture the um, very quick drawing of the human form. Um, we're not going to do that today, but I really love doing gesture drawings because you have like your element or your item that you're drawing with a pencil, a Sharpie pen. I have charcoal today and you're going to use your whole body. Okay. So from your, your, your heart to your arms, to your drawing tool, you're going to really use big motions like this. You can draw to music or you can draw ideas when you think of your concept, okay? So just loosen up by just, sometimes you can just make big forms. But don't really think and allow yourself to just play, just let loose, just experiment with what happens. So remember, think about your concept. Keep your that in your mind. Just have fun. Listen to the music. And basically, it's just to loosen up, to get out of your head and into your hand. This tool is an extension of your body. Okay. Draw a happy face. Remember the feeling that you put, that you have inside is gonna go into your art. Your art always reveals what's going on inside of you. So just keep that in mind too. So keep the sheets that you did, you did the gestures on. We're going to refer to that a little later. But the gestures was kind of a very quick exercise to help you loosen up, okay? 
the next the next exercise we're going to do is the is the um, composition exercise. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, so in your kit, there should be several construction paper sheets. If you don't have construction paper, you can use uh, you can use wrapping paper, brown paper bag, or other papers. Why I like construction paper? Can I have that piece of paper right there, please? The, the yeah. So. This is your, your canvas, right? Composition is the placement of your elements on the page. Um, why I like using construction paper is you can make, you can play with composition in a very quick way without um, being committed to what you're doing. So right now we're just making different shapes, some organic, some straight lined, some big and some small. And we're just gonna play with composition on the page. So a lot of times I tend to divide my composition into thirds in both directions and where there's the intersecting lines, I notice that's where I tend to put a focal point. Um, the empty space around your focal point is just as important as your focal point. It kind of complements each other and gives your, your piece a place to breathe with the empty space. The empty, empty space could be a color or just leaving an object pure blank. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay out some pieces of construction paper and play with my composition. Okay, can everyone see that? Sometimes too, I, I actually, when I'm making a piece of art, I actually take a photo with my phone um, or I look, use a mirror and look at it through the mirror because seeing it through a different lens helps me to see the piece in a different light. Um, But anyway, play with different compositions. And as same here, when you're doing this exercise, think about your concept. Think about the feeling that you wanna portray. Does it, is it, is it happy? Is it wild? Is it energetic? Is it sad? I also like to think about the movement of a piece when I'm making my composition, the flow, the flow from one end to the next. Um, and that's just, that's just for me a personal thing that I like to, to think about in my artwork. Okay. Yeah. So take a few minutes and play with their composition. I'm going to mix my cup. Okay. So while you're playing with your composition, I'm just going to start mixing my color. Thank you. The flow chart. The flow chart.
So these ex exercises are actually building upon each other and they're all gonna come together in creating your abstract piece. And you'll have enough time to create your abstract work. So don't worry, you'll, you'll have more than enough time, okay? Okay, so you, you have um, some idea of what you want your composition to look like. Now we're gonna talk about one of my favorite um, aspects is color and mixing paint. We're just gonna go through color mixing very quickly and briefly. There's so much you can do and learn with color, um, but today's class is gonna be pretty simple, okay? So in, in elementary school, you probably know what your primary colors are, which is blue, yellow, and red. And your secondary colors are green, orange, and violet. So I'm just gonna put um, on my palette the three basic colors or primary colors. Your kit includes the orange. Um, and but you can also mix the orange, okay? So I just have the three colors like that. I'm just gonna show you if we mix red and blue. I just took a very little bit amount. This will make a violet, a very deep violet actually, okay? And you don't have to put it on your, you don't have to put it on your, um, your, your canvas. I'm just using this canvas as a demonstration, okay? So this is the violet. It's almost, a, it's almost looks like a black, but it, it's a violet, okay? and blue and yellow. A little bit more yellow. Okay, it's some blue and yellow and that makes green. Okay. And red. and yellow makes orange. Oh, we have a question. Yay. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, so this is my palette, same as like you have the palette paper. Um, you mix it on the kind of shinier side. Um, yes. Excuse me, yeah, that's where you mix your paint on the canvas or palette paper. The paper with the kind of texture is your canvas paper. And I put that in the kit. So if you wanna experiment a little before you actually go into your, your canvas panel, you have that option, okay? So in here I put yellow and red, but it still looks pretty red. So I'm gonna add more yellow to get my orange. I love mixing paint. It's so relaxing. It's a huge part of the art making process. And sometimes I'll spend a lot of time just mixing, I'll mix my whole palette first and then I'll create my painting. Okay, so that's orange. And then I want, and I, I'm sorry, I should have put, we started with red, blue, And yellow. And the tertiary colors will basically be your primary colors mixed with your secondary colors to give you your tertiary colors. And then you can make your entire color wheel. Um, if you add, see. adding white to any of your colors will give it a different tone. So for example, I'll take a little bit of the red to the white and I'll get a pink, also known as pastel colors, okay? So if you want a more pastel palette, you can add white to your colors. Okay. If you want to tone down, I'll make a pink here. 
If you want to tone down a color, adding a touch, just a very small touch of black will tone down a color. One of my favorite things with mixing paint is to mix the complementary colors. For example, mixing red and green, which are complementary, will actually make beautiful browns and blacks. So if you don't want to use black paint, which can be very strong and stark, I love black, but if you want to create a more subtle black, you mix the complements of each other. So blue and orange, red and green, you'll get really beautiful neutrals. Okay, so go ahead and take some time and think about the palette that you wanna use for your piece. Um, you know, this is, if, if, if this is the first time mixing paint, just be patient with yourself um, and experiment. And it's acrylic paint, so it tends to dry a little fast. You can use the medium that comes in your kit to kind of extend the, the drying time of your paint, okay? So you just add a little bit of that. The medium also stretches the paint and kind of um, dilutes the pigments in the paint, okay? So take a few minutes and mix your, mix your um, palette up. Mix enough so that you know that it will cover your canvas, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix my palette as well. So I am working a little larger just so I can demonstrate um, demonstrations. Yeah. I'm actually using some uh, color straight out of the tube that are not in your kit, um, but all the colors that I am using can be mixed with the colors in your kit. Hey, Christy, we have a question. Yes. So with the medium, how much do you put in? Does it matter? Or do you just put a little bit or? Yeah, I would start with a little bit, almost like cooking, you know, just kind of um, put a little bit at a time and keep mixing it and see what kind of consistency that you like. Yeah, I'm like right now, I'm going to just kind of pour a little bit over each one just to kind of keep it from drying out. This is just the way I do it. You don't, you don't have to do it this way. Um, Thank you. Aloha, everyone. Just a reminder, if you have any questions, please put it in the Q&A on Zoom. There should be a Q&A button, and you can type it in there, and we will ask Ms. Christy. I actually put gloves on because a lot of times I like to paint with my fingers, and I just like to be ready if, I have, if I'm ready to paint with my fingers. So I'm always used to wearing gloves. So Christy, what's inspiring you right now with your color palette? What's going through your yeah, head? So actually, you know, I, I really wanted to paint a painting about today's experience, like being here and teaching and, and just, I know, I think we're going to have a beautiful sunset. Um, it's not going to be a realistic sunset, but it's just the feeling that I have. I'm just really happy <laughs> and uh, excited. And, you know, I, I hope all of you are, are having fun at home. I wish, you know, we could be together in person maybe one day. Um, but 
I, I'm, I'm having fun <laughs> painting. So yeah, I'm painting about that. We're excited to see it. <laughs> Is everyone coming along with their their palette, their color palette? So. So we do have a question. We know we're using acrylic paint, but uh -huh. what's the difference between using acrylic versus oil? Um, so the pigment is just in a different base. Acrylic is a plastic like paint and oil is in an oil base. Um, to clean acrylic, you can just wash it in water. With oils, you need like a, to, to use um, like a thinner to, to clean up. I actually paint in oils and and watercolor, but mainly oils. And I like to use acrylics for classes like this when you want something to dry pretty quickly. Uh, and if I, or if I'm doing a certain style, like acrylics are great to create really clean, flat color. Um, a lot of artists like acrylic just because you don't have to use um, turpentines and things like that. Um, but I, I love oil painting, oil paint. And then should we, how many colors should we have on our palette per painting? Does it matter? That's a, that's a great question. It really is up to you. Like I'm mixing several different colors. Um, if you wanna stick to something like simple, like two, three colors, that's totally fine. It's, it's a beautiful palette. You can use just black and white. Um, there is no rules. So, you know, feel free to, to mix as much as you want. Is that answer? Yep, no, question? that's perfect. Okay. We also have one more coming in. Okay. Who is one of your favorite artists? Ooh, I have a lot of favorite artists. I actually have an Instagram because I have so many favorite artists that I follow. Um, and on the Instagram, it's called New Art Collector, and all my favorite artists are there. Um, there's there's some that you probably know of. I love abstract expressionist artists, and I love um, some artists that you probably have never heard of. Uh, yeah, and I actually really love children's artwork. I think there's something so pure about children's artwork, and my goal, I think, is to one day get back to a place where I can create from a ch child's mind where I'm not thinking and I can be really free. So, <laughs> yes. Okay, so we have some, uh, do you, are we good? Okay, okay. so we, I have some paint on my palette. I'm gonna still, I'm gonna just use this canvas that I've been demonstrating on to, to go over some of the design elements that um, are in the, the chart. So you actually kind of experimented with line uh, when you did the gestures. <clears throat> but one thing, excuse me, I just want to get some some black. But one thing I want to talk about when you make a uh, line is just like I was talking about earlier is you're going to try to use your entire body <laughs> and your arm and your feeling to connect to inspiration and to create, okay? So when you were doing the gestures, like you can either think about your concept that you have, but say for example, you know, you're trying to express a feeling and you know, you, I can say draw a line and you can be like, okay, line, right? But that had no feeling in it, right? And I, you can say, well, draw a line that is sad okay so i'm going to draw a line i'm going to try to put as much of that into i'm 
Okay. So I don't know if you saw a difference, but I felt a difference when I created that line. Um, if, cause I'm putting that whole emotion into that line. Another thing, like if I wanted to create a strong line, I probably load up my paintbrush with a lot more canvas. And I literally will put, try to put all my strength into the, the paintbrush and onto the canvas. So, okay. So that's a different, so these are three different lines. One with no expression, one with sadness and one with strength. So when you, create a line, think about the feeling that you're trying to express, okay? Um, another element, design element is, excuse me, I'm just gonna raise my brush, is shape, okay? So I love organic shapes. Um, I like hard edge elements too, but I love organic shapes. So I'm gonna just get some paint. And then Christy, should yes. we be using our brush or a palette knife when we're doing so this? So that's up to you. Um, this exercise, you can use either. Like right now, because I'm gonna create a shape on my canvas, I'm opting for a palette knife because I can put a lot of paint on at one time. Okay, so I'm gonna load, cause I'm making like an organic shape. And you can use a brush and you can make the same shape. Okay? And then what I'm gonna do, I have just like this tool. Does anybody know what it's called? I bought it from the hardware store. It's like a massive palette knife, okay? So I'm just gonna. So what I'm doing is I'm just making shapes with the, with the palette knife and with the color. Um, and with the composition exercise that you did earlier, you're just kind of playing with the placement of the shapes on your canvas. Um, color is another design element on your piece and you already have your color palette. So you can decide the colors that you wanna use on your piece. Um, the texture, hold on. Texture is a fun way. You can either use your paintbrush or your palette knife. May I get some more paper towel, please? Thank you. So what's beautiful with acrylic paint is it's almost like butter and your palette knife is like a butter knife. So I'm gonna, the texture is basically laying the paint on pretty heavily. You know, using your palette knife to make marks. Um, I'm actually kind of doing what I'm, what is next, which is called mark making. So um, with the texture that you make, you know, you're, you naturally have your own style within you. Like it'll naturally come out with you. So your own markings, is it, is it like rep repetitive marks like that? Is it lines? That's something I think as you, as you make more art, you'll discover your own mark makings. Um, when the acrylic paint is pretty thick and you do have a medium which kind of dilutes and stretcher, stretches out your paint, if you wanna add water to the paint and dilute it a lot more, you can actually create more like washes to the paint. And what's nice with the acrylic paint is don't feel like you're, you have to stick with that. You can actually put more layers on, you can paint over the entire thing. So you really don't have to feel like, you know, you can 
feel free, like you can make, you really can't make mistakes, okay? So right now you, you have your palette, you have your design elements, you know your composition. So you really, I think are ready to make your own abstract piece of art so you can get your canvas out if you're not already working on it and just go through the exercises that we just did and, and start. If you're still feeling a little overwhelmed on where to start, just get some paint and it'll literally like make some marks on your canvas. A lot of times I'll grab like, um, like a dark brown or black and I'll use a roller and I'll just put some paint on there and I'll roll it. it. The first markings just kind of break the ice with the canvas. After that, I'll sit in front of the canvas and I'll just have a conversation with the canvas and I'll see different things that come out. What you created in your, in your gestures, take a look at it. You know, there's some, probably some beautiful line work that you made when you weren't really thinking so hard and reference that and go, wow, I really think that's beautiful and add that to your piece, okay? Hey, Christy. Yes. What are some non-traditional additives that you've used with your paints? We know you mentioned water and we have the medium. Is there anything else that we could use to help thin it out or? Thin out the acrylic? Uh, yeah. We have a question. What are some non-traditional additives that you have used additives. before? Kind of like the medium, I guess. Yeah, you know, actually Liquitex and some other brands, they make a lot of different uh, mediums. I, I actually bought one that I was gonna try. It's called um, super heavy gel. There's stuff with pearl balls in it and like <laughs> fibers and, you know, and I'm, pr I'm pretty sure you can experiment and try different things in it. I, I honestly um, don't use acrylics too much, um, but I think I always ask myself, you know, why not, right? So whatever moves you to try, you know, try it. Yeah. Thank you. So feel free and go ahead and start your painting. You know, you have your elements to, to do. If you have any more questions while you're, while you're painting, you know, just let me know. I'm gonna go ahead and just paint myself, okay? All the paint now. So, so this was actually like my sample, but I think I'm gonna just work on this one. Remember to think about what your concept is, okay? You don't have to reference that, but you wanna remember to stay loose, stay out, you know, get out of your thinking head too much. And put the feeling into your strokes, okay? Ooh, Christy, we have a deep question that came in. <laughs> what does art mean to you? <laughs> Who asked me that? I know. <laughs> uh, art is to me is just self-expression, you know, something that comes from within and it's it's almost anything. It's like I look at life as art. It's not just about making a painting, it's about the way you live your life, the the things that you're passionate about and the way that you express yourself.
Christy, are you able to share what your concept is as you paint this can canvas? Like what's going through your head as you're putting so, paint to a canvas? So honestly, I'm having, I'm just having fun. <laughs> I, I have the feeling of, of today, but because I, I demonstrated with these uh, markings and with these colors, I'm just going off of, um, off of that. So actually I don't have a finished uh, idea of what it's going to look like or what I'm going to make. I'm really like, like what I talked about, I'm really playing with the canvas, having that conversation, seeing what it needs. It almost becomes instinctual, you know, because I think I've painted so much. So, you know, it's good to learn technique. If you want to practice drawing or learn traditional painting, that's awesome. You know, and there are times that I've struggled with my technique um, and that's why I spent years actually painting water because I did a project that included figure and water and I felt, oh my gosh, that's really bad. So I spent years actually painting water and um, because I wanted to not let my technical skills prevent me from making my art. Um, but yeah, anyway, right now, uh, all those elements that we talked about are pretty much in my, it's, it's almost like innate already. So I'm not really thinking actually too much, but I am looking and I go, you know, I'm just kind of feeling <laughs> what the painting needs and, and, and things like that. Yeah, it's not really looking like much, but I, I just, I'm having a lot of fun. Yeah. How will you know when you're finished? Oh, uh, that's a really good question. Um, that's all up to you. So I don't have an answer for that. Every piece is different. And is it okay if we have some white space with the canvas oh, or definitely. should we be filling the whole thing yeah, up? Yeah, definitely. So like I will probably, you know what? I'm gonna actually grab to, to can I grab the samples? So, um, Okay, so this is a piece I just did um, as a sample. It's made out of acrylic. Uh, I kind of started very similar to this where I kind of placed a lot of color. And then this is kind of like my white space. So even though I have paint all over, I'm probably gonna go back and refine some areas so that it kind of is like my white space. This is kind of like my focal area with a lot of lot going on. And then I kind of dissipate the activity with the white on the top, okay? With those two pieces, what were you thinking about as you're painting them? Actually, so um, Jake Shimabukuro's music, uh, I was listening to Hallelujah for this piece. Okay. And um, this piece is his song, um, Blue Roses Falling. It's a beautiful piece that he wrote regarding um, his friend's grandmother who was terminally ill and she saw blue roses falling from the sky. Um, yeah, Jake and I are actually working on a, or collabing on a installation for the Hilo airport. So I really fell in love with his music and I'm inspired by, by the passion that he has for playing his music. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me just talk a little bit about this. Yeah, so so with this piece as well, um, this is actually on uh, with oil paint. And the same thing is I kind of have a focal area. If you can see, um, if you were to, to draw a grid um, divided into thirds, you can see I kind of have a focus point right where the two lines would probably intersect. It's not something that I really think about, but it's just what I notice with my work. Um, and I like to have a lot of movement, a lot of um, energy in the strokes. Um, there's a lot of work that I do do that is not as um, energetic as this. If you see my work, um, there's a lot of very peaceful and prettier type of styles. And I love doing that as well. But I think this abstract work really is what I love doing. <laughs> it's more um, just something that kind of makes me feel alive. Um, so anyway.
you can also use almost anything to make your art, your painting. You don't have to use a palette knife or a brush. I've seen some artists use brooms, like make use canvases and use brooms. You can probably use your toothbrush or you can use, like I said, your, your hands, um, combs. You really can use almost anything. Um, I like to use rollers. I think that really, you know, is really fun. Christy, as you continue to paint, we do have a question. Yep. How do you deal with the paint when or if you accidentally mess up? How do you fix your canvas or do you think that there's never accidents? Yeah, so um, yeah, I, I kind of don't really look at anything as like a mistake because I feel like I can paint over it. So maybe right now if you're painting and your paint is still wet, just let it dry, you know, just leave it alone. Um, you really can go back over and paint with it, even if it's acrylic or oil paint. The only, I think, medium that's a little less forgiving, still you can fix it, is watercolor. It's a little bit more immediate and you really, it's a little bit different, dif difficult to go over and make changes, I think. Not impossible. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, even though this is an abstract class, if you feel moved to put something representational, like a flower, a fish, or something else, or paint a tree, it, there, there is no rules. You really can put anything on your canvas. Someone contacted me and they said, oh, you know, I'm not used to painting abstract. You know, I'm used to kind of doing things a certain way. And I said, well, that's great that, you know, you're, you're taking this class because, I like feeling, or I like trying new experiences and kind of being challenged and getting out of my comfort zone. I mean, that's the whole reason why you make art is to take yourself out of your usual routine and um, like the, 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 your ordinary life. Like, you know, art really could take you anywhere. Your imagination is one of the most important things that you have. You know, it's something that as a kid, you know, we're encouraged to to use and to have. And then somehow as adults, like we, we kind of don't really tap into that imagination and, you know, don't forget about it. It's such a, a useful thing to have, like to ask yourself, like, what if, right? Christy, what is the canvas telling you now? <laughs> Sometimes it's not words, you know, it's just feelings, okay? <laughs> yeah, actually, it's like I said, it's just, so I get just lost in the canvas. It's, um, it's just an, an almost instinctual, so I'm not really thinking. It's just a feeling, and I just like, you know, it's, it's faster than I'm thinking, actually. So it's natural for me to just go, to grab this pain and do this, it's it's like I'm not really thinking honestly. <laughs> <That's perfect. laughs> Don't think. <just> paint. <laughs> 
This is the only time when you make art, you don't have to think. <laughs> don't get me wrong. There's some very, you know, deep art, conceptual art. You know, there's a lot of thought that goes behind art and what you make. Um, just today, though, it's a, it's a little light and fun and playful. So, you know, you don't have to go there right now. What, you know, what I really want uh, with this class is for you to just feel free, like you can do anything and you can try anything. And I, uh, I want you to just like, um, just fall in love with the paint, with making art, you know, taking the time for yourself. Like sometimes people say, you know, Christy, I'm really, I really love art, but I'm not good. And I said, well, how much time do you spend making art? You know, the, the only way you'll get better is to practice. And that's how I look at, at art and making art is it's, it's my practice. So I don't feel like I'm focused on the final piece or the final outcome, or if it's gonna be the perfect piece, I just look at it as practice. Um, keeps it light, keeps it fun. Um, yeah, so if you wanna get better, you know, that's what I recommend is, is uh, practicing. So where I'm at with this piece, I actually will let it dry. And once it's dry, I wanna go back and put another layer, maybe do some glazing, maybe tone down some areas. But this is just my first layer, you know, and I had fun doing it. Um, I'm gonna probably start this one. We have about what, 15 more minutes, 10 more minutes to paint. So I'm just gonna start another, another canvas. I'm actually gonna, as a reminder, folks, yes, we have about 15 minutes left, and then we're going to go into our Q&A with Christy. So if you have any questions for her, please put it in the Zoom Q&A section. Mahalo. Oh, Chrissy, just this just came in. Love your working with a palette knife and fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it up, girl. <laughs> Thank you. It's super fun. You know, it's 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 really um, kind of fun for me because I've never really taught or shared my process, like maybe a few times. Um, and I was kind of like, how do you explain like what you know your creative process? So I, thank you for giving me the opportunity to kind of having to articulate this process, um, you know, just know that it's just my process. Like your process could be totally different and you can embrace like your own art journey and, and how you 
make art. There's no right or wrong, you know? I decided to just keep working on this piece because I had color on my canvas. Sometimes I keep a, a canvas in my studio or extra paint that I have um, and I don't want to just get rid of it. I'll kind of put it on the canvas. Christy, some of the folks are wondering, do we need to finish this now or no. how do we come back to it? Yeah, not at all. So you probably want to let it dry and maybe tomorrow or in a few days or later on, just go back to it, look at it, um, you know, let it speak to you. <laughs> um, you know, you're welcome to uh, email me if you want to share with me the, the work that you've done, if you have any questions. Um, sometimes, like I even will ask my daughter, she's 10 years old, I'll say, Sophie, you know, what do you think of this? And she'll actually go, mom, you know, it needs something over here. So um, she always gives me really good advice. So I would ask a friend or an another artist friend or anyone, you know, just, just their opinion. Um, sometimes when you look at a canvas so long, you kind of fixate on, on it and you, you need to see it from fresh eyes. And that's why I was saying, sometimes it's good to use your camera or look at it through a reflection of the mirror. I'm just gonna wash my hands. Okay, folks, we're going to give you guys another five minutes to complete your painting, and then we'll go into Q&A with Christy. Yep, five more minutes. Actually, Christy, where is the best, best place to buy more supplies locally? Oh, where are they? Yeah, where is the best place no, to buy? No, where, where are they? Are they located oh, on Oahu? Um, if you're in Hawaii, I guess, uh, oh, you're Big Island based. That's right. So mm -hmm. maybe Hilo and Oahu. Okay, so on Hilo, there's Akamai Art Store. In Kona, there's um, Ben Franklin Crafts that has supplies. On Oahu, there's Hawaiian Graphics and Ben Franklin Crafts. I'm not sure. Do you know of any other place? Somebody said Target or Ross's 
has some supplies. <laughs> Rosses will always surprise you. That's what they have. So what kind of canvas paper should I buy? Oh, shucks. Okay. Do we have that palette? Um, let me check. Um, Oh yeah, that's a, so this is of the canvas that came inside of the kit, but if you go to the art store or even online, um, you can find, it's called canvas palette or canvas pad. Yeah, canvas pad. Yeah, um, yeah canvas pad. Yeah. With acrylic paint, is it okay to have globs of paint or does it have to end up as a smooth surface? No, no, I mean, like if you can get the angle of my, painting it's it's very like coming off of the canvas it's very thick and heavy in some areas and lighter in some really like you know there are no rules it's your aesthetic if you want it heavy and and kind of textured you know that's definitely um, a certain style and look so yeah have you ever started a painting and decided not to continue if so why uh yes I've started a lot of paintings <laughs> and haven't finished. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll leave it and uh, get back to it later. Um, really, honestly, like the, the luxury of just kind of creating art for myself. Um, I haven't really had that lately, um, but just, you know, I, I've just started kind of painting, uh, finding some time to paint for myself. I've, I've been doing some commission works for projects and a lot of times, you know, I'm focused on what the client wants or the environment that it's going in. So um, I really don't have the luxury of just like putting something aside and painting it later. But now I think, you know, I really want to make that time for my own personal work. Um, I also have some masking tape. Um, masking tape is fun. I also use this like construction paper to kind of lay out my uh, grid or my um, design, especially when I do murals or larger pieces. I love just like kind of putting tape on the wall and that just gives me like an idea of scale and, and size and how big I need to, to make something. So masking tape is really fun. And like I said, with acrylic, what's really nice is you can get really smooth, flat, clean surfaces. So when I want to create something that's a little bit more hard edged, I really like to use oil paint and I mean, acrylic paint and masking tape. And going off the masking tape, um, how does the composition exercise tie in with our painting? I'm guessing that's laying it out is kind of just giving you that, that uh, basic visual or structure yep. of what you want mm -hmm. to do without kind of like what the grid, yeah, right? Without committing. There's, yeah. there's literally like a scientific formula or explanation of you know, making something compositionally strong, right? Um, but that's something that, you know, it's for another class. <laughs> <laughs> this is 101. It's 101. <laughs> um, and then what is the difference between artist grade and lower grade paints? Sure, okay, so the student grade is, um, tends to be a little bit more affordable. Um, I noticed that it, it might be not as pigmented or the texture is a little different. Um, I'm for this class, even though it, it's for all levels, including beginners, I suggested the Liquitex acrylic, which is a professional grade acrylic paint, because um, I love if, if it's, it's an option to use the best quality materials. It's not necessary, but I love really good quality paints and supplies. Thank you. And then when you paint, do you always use gloves or can you use your hands? <laughs> you can just use your hands. I've just been, I think, painting for so long that uh, when paint gets all over me, it kind of makes me a little sick. <laughs> yeah, and I, I love the, the ease of cleanup because it literally will I'll get covered with paint. You are definitely a clean painter as we see that there's not a speck <laughs> on your body. Um, do you actually, do you recommend putting clear protective coating when your painting is done or just let it dry naturally? For over what, acrylic or um, oil? I guess, yeah, over I, I know oil. oil, like sometimes artists put um, the finish coat over it. I, I, I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. I mean, once you finish your painting, I wouldn't keep it in direct sunlight. Um, 
you know, sunlight, whether it's a print or an original will fade the color. So keep it out of direct sunlight. And then actually, um, do you always, going back to composition, do you always do the comp composition exercise before you paint? No. So the, the construction paper is not something that I do. I just uh, did that for this class to kind of, as an exercise to show you um, an easy way to play with composition um, versus getting going right into the finished piece. I didn't want us to, to draw or write on the canvas because the comp construction paper allows you to have more freedom and flexibility. So I don't do that um, for my paintings, no. I actually sit in front of the canvas and just go right into some mark making. I mean, I have my concept in mind, but I really like to just have that experience with the canvas. And then speaking of the canvas, what is the best canvas paperweight? Or how do you choose what canvas to use? I know when we- Are you talking about like something like this, like a, or paper? I, 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 I believe paper, I've just seen one type. One, yeah. um, there is different weights of canvas, you know, but that, also determines the price. Mm. So that's really a personal choice, I think. Yeah. So generally, the better quality, the more expensive. The heavier, the heavier, the heavier quality, yeah. There's also different um, textures. There's smooth canvas, uh, and there's like a rougher texture, and that's really preference as well. Wow, I wish I could see everybody's <laughs> painting and what what they you know their concept was and stuff. So if you would like to to sh share it with me, I would love to see it. Oh, actually, we do have a in house in house guest painter who yeah. has been helping Christy. It's awesome. Come. And Michaela. This is Michaela. Come, our lovely intern who does not could, know this is happening. <laughs> could you share? a little bit about what was going through your mind. I think um, it's awesome. Yeah, I just kind of, okay, come, oh, come sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just, I started painting and then. <laughs> and I she's never, painting, you've never painted before, right? Not like this, <laughs> oh, okay. but um, I just started drawing down the paint and then it kind of reminds me of floating islands. And then I just kept making them. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any concept in mind or you were just kind um, of like just feeling it like you were oh, talking about nice. just moving with it and it just yeah it just came to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. I love the color palette and yeah, so she has a style that just kind of came up, you know, on its own. Isn't that awesome? Did you have fun? Yes. <laughs> oh good. It looks cool. Thank you, Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how many painting projects do you work on at a time? I guess how many, just, uh, or does it, does it, is a, does it come in like slowly? Is it a easy flow or do you kind of get bombarded or? Um, I'm, I'm actually thankfully quite busy, uh, with work. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, you know, since that experience happened like that, I shared about, you know, when I decided to to just do the art, I I started doing um, some hospitality and some state jobs and some work. And after that, it just seemed to, as one project closed, another one would come up. And I really don't know how that works. You know, I don't know what job I'm gonna get next. And it's taught me to have faith and trust to this whole process. Um, but yeah, I'm really thankful that uh, I have work and I keep really busy. So I actually um, kind of do multiple projects at once. Yeah. <laughs> Come in. Um, my niece is an inspiring artist. She has sold some small pieces and has done a large mural as well. What adv advice can you give to her who is entering college in the fall? Hmm. Does she want to pursue art? I'm assuming so, yes. Okay. Wasn't clarified, but I'm assuming. What's the best advice to aspiring young artists? Yeah, I mean, I I think you know, like like I shared, like I I almost gave up, so I was given a second chance, which I'm really thankful for. Um, but what I've noticed in these last I don't know all these years is 
to, if I keep painting, I'm putting intention and I'm putting energy into the work. And that seems to make the difference. If I don't paint, if I don't make art, some, like nothing happens, but regardless of how busy I am, or, you know, maybe like things don't seem to be moving, just make art, like practice, keep making art, share it, share your dream because people will show up and will help you um, in the most unexpected ways and ask, like she can email me, you know, I'm happy to help her um, or she can ask other artists. I think artists wanna support artists, <laughs> so. On that note, please, people, um, share your pieces on Instagram and tag us at Servco Lexus. We really oh, want to yeah. see that would be your awesome. artwork come in and tag know, me too and at Christy Christy. Cosmetes. Yep. Yeah, I would love to see it. That's K R I S T I E K O S M I D E S at Christy Cosmetes. Like paint and create or something, or Lexus. Yeah, Lexus art class. <laughs> Let's do hashtag paint and create. P-A-I-N-T-A-N-D-C-R-E-A-T-E. -E. Yeah, style, guys. that would be awesome. I'm really looking forward to, to seeing what you created. Or is, I know you can't answer me, but is, is it something, are you happy with what you created? You know, And um, I, I hope you just enjoyed making art today. And actually, you know, um, one last question. Has art ever helped you get through happy or sad times? Oh, definitely, definitely. I've had um, some definitely challenging times in my life. And I think even just from a young kid, you know, having an outlet, having a place to, like I said, connect to inspiration and something bigger than myself always makes me feel so good. And um, one artist told me that the, the answers are always in the studio meaning like make art. Um, there's something about having that time for yourself. Um, it's, it's, it's so good. So yes, art has definitely helped me through life. On that note, um, mahalo Christy for being a part of our Lux Living Masterclass. Mahalo for joining us this evening. And until next time, ahui ho. Thanks. Thank you.